Our speaker today is Reverend Keith Norton. For as far back as he can remember, Reverend Keith has had a connection to the spirit world. Get rid of that, that's distracting. Some of his earliest memories as a child include seeing and hearing people that were from the beyond. Some people call them ghosts or spirits, but to him, it was just a normal part of life. It was these experiences that made Reverend Keith want to learn more about this unseen world. As a young child, he used to spend hours reading every book he could find on the spirit world. And the more he read, the more fascinated he became in learning about this strange and different place, which includes mediumship and spiritualism. For many years, Reverend Keith was in search of a church that felt right. And once he entered the sanctuary of this very building, the Center of Enlightenment in 2006, he knew that this was the place for him. That has happened to many people. Over the years, he has served on the board of directors in many roles as trustee, vice president, and president. In February of 2016, he was ordained as a minister of the Center of Enlightenment. And in February 2020, he was appointed as senior minister by Reverend Ken Novacheski. Please welcome Reverend Keith Norton. Reverend David. So today is a special day, more special than every other day. It was 12 years ago today that Fiona and I stood on this very podium, our platform, and exchanged our wedding vows. We were actually married in this church. And the day I married Fiona, I married my best friend and soulmate. Um, we literally will finish each other's sentences. It's kind of scary. Me walking through the grocery store, I'll be go, you know, it sounds good. And she'll go chocolate ice cream. <laughs> or we'll be go, oh, what do you want for dinner? You want to go to Kohl's? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, it's kind of funny, actually. Um, that day, though, was an awesome day. I mean, we had most of our friends and family here. We had five ministers as part of our wedding, which was interesting. Um, we all felt they held a special place in our heart, so we wanted to include them in some little form or fashion. Uh, Reverend Monica was our music coordinator. Reverend Maureen Darga read the spiritual passage. Reverend Barbara read about our rings, and our rings are significant because they're called posy rings. And they're modeled after, they're actually reproductions of posy rings, which um, are in the London Historical Museum, and they are from the mid 1400s. And a posy ring, um, just to share a little bit of history, are promise rings for lovers that were back in the medieval times. And on, in the band, ours both say yours only, but they're actually reproductions of rings that were back in the times of 1400s. And I'll play into the sermon later. Um, Reverend Ken blessed our rings and us, and Reverend Kathleen married us. We celebrated with a luncheon in the basement and our wedding cake had black roses on it with the words to death do us part in tombstones. <laughs> because as you know, we love Halloween. Um, in fact, we heard later when we went and picked up the cake, the lady kind of got in a little bit of trouble because she put black roses and black border on a wedding cake. <laughs> so they don't normally do that, but she did it for us and she was kind of laughing about it. Um, and after the wedding, after the luncheon, we even went to a cemetery to get our wedding photos taken. But the story begins many, many eons before that. One of the most powerful words in the world is a simple hello. About some 20 years ago, uh, I was in a ghost hunting group and um, there was another ghost hunting group that held a paranormal conference and it was at the lady whose house uh, it was at her house that she held the paranormal conference and i was one of maybe 20 or 30 um people that were in this gathering and i think there were probably four or five groups in total there and that was back when ghost hunting was just really picking up in popularity in the state of michigan and around the area and so we kind of all knew each other and worked together so we got this bonding moment um, and it was a fun evening. 
and but the group that I was with, I never really felt connected to. And so we were all kind of mingling and I, I was kind of like just explore, you know, part of being in a group and expanding your horizons is collaborating with other groups so building those networks and connections. And as I was mingling through the crowd, I found an open seat on a porch swing next to one of the other investigators and so hello and introduced myself. She said hello and introduced herself as Fiona. Hello is such a powerful or simple word, but it has such a powerful, um, but it's so powerful and un opens unlimited possibilities. That started a conversation that lasted the rest of the evening, but would change my life and what my life in ways that I couldn't even imagine at the time. I eventually joined that group and became one of the lead investigators. So in 2004, we attended another ghost conference and one of the folks that attended that conference was a gentleman by the name of Lon. And we kind of hit it off with Lon. Uh, we got to talk to him on several different occasions. Um, we asked him if he'd be joining, interested in joining the group. And he said, yes. So as we became better and better friends, we realized that we wanted to form our own group. So we formed our own group and uh, left the one group. And as we got to know each other, or as Fiona and I got to know each other more throughout you know, the, the one group, we realized that um, this isn't the first time we've shared a life together. We've had many, many lifetimes together. And in fact, um, the last life we figured was in medieval England and we were both madly in love with each other, but couldn't be together. And it ended unexpectedly. And I don't know why I don't, I've always felt like it was because of the plague or some type of catastrophe, whatever, but that's why the posy rings hold such a special meaning to us. A couple of years later, um, as I said, Lon and I and Fiona started our own paranormal group. And we went to an investigation out in the Hillsdale. And part of the investigation was a cemetery out there supposedly really haunted. So we went to the most, what considered the most haunted part of the cemetery. And that's where I proposed to her. So she was totally taken back because I'm sneaky like that. <laughs> But over time, I realized that the person I randomly introduced myself to was my soulmate. And then, like I said, on October 3rd, 2009, we became um, husband and wife in this very church. And Lon was our best man, my best man. As we grew, we realized that we had a caseload for our investigators and becoming more and more um, than we could handle. So we put out a call to you know anybody who wanted to get into paranormal. And we met this lady named Cindy who have filled out an application and we talked to her and we met with her at a local restaurant and they kind of interviewed her. And, you know, the answers that she gave were kind of, you know, she's just getting into it, but she loved the shows and stuff. So we decided immediately on the spot to bring her on and train her. Well, little did I know that she would become like a sister to me. Um, you know, just because she shared the same interest, she's goofy, just like us, you know, had the love of ghost hunting. So then a um, couple of years later, this is probably 2010, we volunteered at OSR down in Mansfield, Ohio. And when we were down there, it's a bunch of ghost hunting groups that care for this building. And it's where they filmed Shawshank Redemption. It's a massive building. It's like 300,000 square foot building built in like the 1890s. And it's meant to look like a castle. So we ended up running into this group. Um, and the first person we met was a gentleman by the name of Sean. And he, and it's kind of funny how we met because like, we literally parked next to this vehicle that had a Madison Heights, like Victory Motors Madison Heights license plate in a Michigan. And I'm like, you're from Madison Heights? I'm like, small world. And he's like, no, I'm actually living in Farmington but I bought my truck in Madison Heights. So that started that conversation. And so, the group that Sean was with ended up splitting and we ended up folding our group and joining together with them. So we, we ended up meeting the other investigators in their group and we're all best friends now. We're all under one group. So over time, Lon, Cindy, Fiona, and I realized we wanted to, um, oh, we realized that we wanted to expand our groups. This is where we actually met with Sean and 
you know, throughout the idea of forming, you know, joining their group and collapsing ours. And we found out that they were kind of leery at first, but once they met us and figured out how crazy we were and, you know, they kind of felt like we were a good fit. So then two years ago, Cindy introduced us to our friend, her friend, Kim. And at first we thought Kim was shy and kind of, you know, quiet. Then we really got to know Kim and she's the complete opposite. She's just not real, you know, um, she's kind of shy around new people, I'll, I'll say. So over the past couple of years, we've become the best friends, um, the best friends you could ever imagine. I can't imagine having a better group of friends. I mean, seriously, they're there for everything. We go on vacations together. And we all have a, a love of ghost hunting, Halloween um, history. So when we go on our trips, we're always finding like historical places to visit, you know, Gettysburg. Um, we went to Kentucky, did the distillery tour. We went to Indiana recently to visit an infirmary that was a poor house back in the early 1900s to do some investigating there. Um, but wherever we go on vacations together, it's like a bunch of teenagers getting together. I mean, we're all talking about what snacks we're bringing for the car ride and what snacks. I mean, literally, like you think we were moving into the hotel for a month with the amount of food we bring. And we all end up in somebody's room together just to hang out at night, and, you know, laugh and have a good time. Um, and then, you know, obviously, we realize that friends like this are extremely rare and consider Lon, Sean, Kim and Cindy as family. I mean, Kim, uh, she, Cindy's family all lives in Illinois. We've had her over for many Thanksgivings and Christmases. And, um, you know, it's, it's nice. These, they become part of our extended family, um, all because I randomly walked up to some beautiful lady and introduced myself and said hello. And in closing, I'll leave you with this thought that um, I heard this comedian once, and he would always close his repertoire was such a simple thing, but I, I always remembered it, but I cannot remember the comedian that said it. Um, he always would say, remember a stranger is a friend you have not met yet. And I thought that was so profound for today. So, and this all began with a simple hello. So thank you for letting me speak today and listening. I'll pass this or have this, it has our buddy.